Anna Sester here with another video. In my episode on the ancestry that linked uh, to Sacagawea, I mentioned the Fila Ra coming to Quebec. And this episode will go into more detail on those Fila Ra. The Fila Ra, huh, what? The Fila Ra. If you have any French Canadian ancestry, you more than likely have at least one Fila Ra in your family tree. So Fila Ra is French for daughters of the king. And no, these weren't actual, legitimate, biological daughters of the King of France. Before going into details, let's get a little history of Quebec. The French had been in the area of Quebec since 1534, when Jacques Cartier claimed it for France. Quebec, or New France as it was known at the time, was established by Samuel de Champlain in 1608. The French settlement was really small, and it didn't experience a lot of growth over the first few years. By 1634, the town of Trois Rivières was founded, and then that was followed by Montreal in 1642. My ancestry goes back to the founding of Trois Rivières. The colony was in constant peril from Native Americans until about 1665 with the arrival of the first soldiers, the Carignan Reg Regiment. There were about 1,200 soldiers that arrived to protect the colonists from the Native Americans, mainly the Iroquois. And then later, many of them became colonists themselves. About a third of the soldiers remained in New France. I also have an ancestor who came over with this regiment and remained as a colonist as well. It was at this point that France implemented strategies to increase the colonization of New France. This included sending young girls, the Fila Ra, to New France to marry soldiers that had stayed behind. What's up with that? Well, France was attempting to naturally grow the number of colonists in New France. These young women were called Daughters of the King because they were part of an initiative by King Louis XIV to increase settlement of the Canadian colony. 768 women came to New France between 1663 and 1673. All but 31 of them married once they were in Quebec. Most of the women were young, single, and orphaned. Their transportation to Canada was paid by the king, and many were given a dowry of 50 livres upon marriage. 50 livres is equivalent to about $15 at that time period, and it's about $780 today. This was a year's wage for the average worker. So to come over to New France, they were getting paid a year's wage. That's significant at that time. The fact that 31 of these women did not marry indicates that the women were not forced to marry. However, they did not receive their dowry of 50 livres unless they married. So how do you find out if you have a king's daughter in your family history? Well, first, you'll need to determine who in your direct line is from Quebec. For me, it was my grandfather, who immigrated to the U.S. in the early 1950s. From there, you want to trace the line back using baptism, marriage, and burial records that are digitized and available on Ancestry.com in the Drouin collection. Also available on Ancestry is the Tangag Genealogical Dictionary. Wow, that's a mouthful. This is a compilation of those marriage, or, uh, marriage baptism, and burial records, and they're sorted by last name. This collection was solely the work of Father Cyprian Tangay after he was appointed to the Dominion Statistics Department in 1867. That was a lot of work. I cannot even imagine how long it must have taken him. But he comp compiled seven volumes of genealogical records from Quebec, um, the Maritime Provinces, Ontario, and then the old French settlements that were in the U.S. I'm not sure if some people know, but parts of the U.S. were... Um, part of the New France French colony, including um, parts of Detroit and New Orleans and Louisiana. So there are a few discrepancies in that collection, but overall it's accurate and it's based on the original records. So if you ever find yourself at a brick wall with a French Canadian ancestor, consult Tengay's genealogical dictionary and you'll soon be back on track. It's pretty good. So the wonderful thing about the Drouin collection is that you're able to actually view the digitized baptism, marriage, or burial record for your ancestor as recorded by a Catholic priest who performed the ceremony. It's the actual document that was written at the time the ceremony was performed. I mean, it's almost like you're right there with them. So baptism records 
they'll record the date of birth as well. And burial records will also record the date of death. So marriage records, they're like little trees in themselves. They'll list the bride's name, the groom's names, and the parents' names of each of them, um, and their place of residence. So you really get a lot of information from a marriage record. These records will also note if a spouse or a parent is deceased. And I've read a record of mine for an ancestor that gave the details of her capture as a child by Native Americans from her home in the United States, her forced removal by these Native Americans to Quebec, and then she was apparently adopted by a French family and became baptized. And this was all explained in her baptism record. So if you can't read the French record, I would suggest going on social media and joining some genealogy groups. Someone on one of these groups can translate the records for you. If I see a record on there that's in French, I'm more than happy to um, translate the record for someone. So I would recommend doing that because they hold a wealth of information and a lot of them, yeah, they're just going to be like born, died, you know, whatever. But once in a while, you might find one with quite a bit of interesting information on it. So continue researching back until you come to an ancestor that's born around 1651. Of course, you're going to be kind of guessing that until you confirm it. Um, but in searching on ancestry, you might come across arrival dates for that ancestor to Quebec in the late 1670s and a first marriage around this time as well. That's a good indication that you might have a fetal rock. So um, my ancestor who fit this time frame was Catherine Ghetto. She was estimated to be born in 1651. And she had an arrival date in Quebec of 1671. So I found her marriage record in the Drewing Collection. And we can look at it here. She married Vivienne Jeanne Vienne. And yes, Vivienne was a guy, not a girl. And she married him on November 29th, 1671. Um, upon reviewing the record, we read that Vivienne Jeanne was born to a Vivienne Jeanne, his father, and Suzanne Apru in La Rochelle, France. Catherine Gatteau was born, as best I can read, again, good luck with some of these records, handwriting's not so great, but as best I can read, she was born to the deceased Barry Gatteau and the deceased Genevieve Doucet in Paris, France. So Catherine was born in France, immigrated to Quebec in 1671, which is the time period of the king's daughters coming to Quebec. Also, her marriage record indicates that both her parents are deceased. Many of the young women who came as king da king's daughters were orphans. So she's a potential candidate for a king's daughter when I'm doing research. So when you have an ancestor coming across with these kind of details, you may also have a potential candidate as well. So you'll want to visit a website that has a list of the Fida Ra. And the website is fidaraw.org. That's F-I-L-L-E-S-D-U-R-O-I dot org. This website is for the La Société de Fida Ra et Soldat de Carignan. You'll want to click on the King's Daughters in the side menu and then click on the link that lists the Fida Ra. The women are listed by last name. So just click the appropriate letter beginning their, your ancestor's last name and then scroll through to see if she's listed. My ancestor, Catherine Gatto, is listed. So voila, you have a Fida Ra as an ancestor when you find them in this list. It's that easy once you've determined who that ancestor is. You would also want to visit this website to confirm if one of your male ancestors arriving in Quebec during the 1665 time period was one of the soldiers of the Carignan Regiment. I made sure to check Catherine Gatto's husband, Vivienne Jean Vivienne. There's a separate link on that website just for the guys. And Catherine's husband was not one of the Carignan soldiers, but he was just another male colonist to New France. If you are able to trace your lineage back to the Fidela or Carignan soldier, then you may want to complete the membership application for the society. Um, it requires submitting an application and lineage chart with the supporting documentation for each one of the ancestors that um, leads up in your tree to the actual Fidela. But there are other benefits as well, so you may want to take a look at that. One last item of note. 
You may have noticed that my ancestor, Catherine Gatto, married a man called Vivien Jean Diet Bien. What's up with the Diet name? Well, many French Canadian families added a Diet name onto their surname, and there were different reasons for doing that. Um, sometimes it was to, to differentiate, they had so many kids that um, you would have a surname of just with tons of people with that surname. So you could differentiate between one family and another by adding a deep name onto the certain surname. Um, sometimes that deep name was like the town of origin where they came from. Uh, sometimes it was the occupation for the head of the household who came up with the deep name. And sometimes I have no idea. Um, some of the children of that person would go on to adopt the deep name as well, but then some of their other children may just continue to stick with the surname. It makes it a little more difficult when you're doing genealogy research. Um, you may also find that you have ancestors whose surnames, they drop the deep name after a while. Like you have a, an ancestor with a deep name and then two generations later, they went back to the surname and aren't using the deep name anymore. It, it could be all over the place. So these deep names were legal names and they show up on legal documents of the time period. I don't know why Vivian Jeanne adopted the deep name of Vienne. It's not a town or occupational name, um, so really I have no idea. Well, that's it for today's episode of I Dig Dead People. First of all, I'd like to apologize for any of my bad French accent with any of these names. I'm using my um, high school and college French. So for any of my um, Quebec Claw friends who are watching, I apologize. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, Make sure to click the like button and then also subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to click the bell to receive notifications of new episodes. And if you'd like to leave a comment, feel free to do so. I'd love to read any comments that you have. See you next time when we dig for dead people. Mm -hmm.